You ever had a problem? <laughs> Me too. Me too. It's, it's, um, uh, I was reading about the Apostle Paul today, and he kept praying that the Lord would take away his affliction, like my sciatic thing, and the Lord decided for Paul for him to keep it. And I decided, I wrote some things down today. I said, Lord, if you want me to drag around, walk up one step at a time, then I'm, I'm okay because I'll get strong with your strength. And so I just accept it. And I started thinking today uh, about problems. And watching the news recently, I see some problems. Do you? Of course. And uh, I, I've, I wrote down in my Bible, if I can turn over, turn over here to it, some problems that, uh, that I've had since being born July the 7th, close. Amen. Yeah, July the 7th, close, uh, up in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, I wrote down, uh, my dad was a 100% World War II vet. That was a problem. Because of that, he lost my mother. He came back from the war. He was emotionally, physically uh, just torn, all the pieces. And he lost my mother. My mother was a very beautiful young lady and vivacious and funny. And, and she was just a remarkable woman, remarkable. But she got with the wrong crowd because she couldn't take daddy. And she started drinking. She became an alcoholic. And I grew up under that. And I'm glad you have Reformers Unanimous because it means something to me. Uh, because my mother eventually got the victory many years later. And she's with the Lord now, and I'm glad she is. Um, but that was a problem because I, I remember opening the refrigerator and taking a, a pint of ancient age bourbon and, and, and while my mother wasn't watching, I poured it and I got the snot beat out of me for it. I mean, I got my clock cleaned for pouring booze down the drain as a, a little boy. That was a problem. That was a problem. And then getting kicked out of school a couple of grades because... I got real mad and real mean, and that was a problem. Just, it was a problem. Um, and my mother and dad being divorced, it was a problem. Then Rita and I, the, the greatest thing that ever happened to me was, other my salvation was meeting that lady right there. Uh, because I'm, I shoot from the hip, I'm kind of laid back, and I'm kind of goofy, and whatever, you know, whatever. Well, not, that's not her. <laughs> I mean, she's organized. Uh, she's disciplined. I'm not organized. I'm not disciplined. I don't even want to be. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't mean anything to me being organized, especially when she does it for me, <laughs> you know. Uh, and so God brought her along just, just in time, okay? And so, but that, that, was, that, that from time to time has been a problem. I mean, you know, she said, honey, would you please hang up your shirt? And when I, I said, I did, right there on the bedpost. <laughs> And she said, no, I mean in the closet. Why am I wearing it again tomorrow? And so we, we have a discussion about that. <laughs> That's a problem. And maybe you never had a discussion with your wife, but we've had a few. We've never talked about divorce. Murder, yes, but not divorce. <laughs> and then we found out that uh, if we were going to have children, it would have to be through adoption. That was a problem because we lost two of those beautiful children in the process of trying to adopt, and I was busted all to pieces, and my wife was very strong through that, but I wasn't. I wasn't. And that was a problem. That created a problem. Then financial setbacks, a car wreck, unexpected bill, those are problems, right? right. Uh, sometimes problems even in ministry, being misunderstood, saying something I shouldn't say. I'm pretty cool at that. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know? Uh, sticking my nose in other people's business when I shouldn't, you know, but that's a problem. Um, having cancer twice, sitting in the chemo, chemo room, had, had to have my gizzard cut out right here, had a lymphoma, had to take out something out, to, you know, and my, uh, I didn't know, my face was kind of twisted around, and actually it was an improvement. <laughs> And, uh, but, but God healed me. But sitting in the chemo room with six other people in that big green chair, and that chemo stuff, that was a problem. It was a problem. Then uh, the doctor said, you have, you have another kind of cancer, and I had to take part of my finger off. That's a problem because I'm left-handed. Writing, um, 
scratching. No good, man. <laughs> no finger, no no fingernail there, man. You just can't get at it. That's a problem, you know. You ever had a problem? That's a problem, you know. Yeah. Um, then, uh, lo and behold, the, the back thing, and then I had a heart issue. Had to have stent. The doctor said, "Toby, you have 95 percent blockage in that that big artery in your heart. You you about to die, man." And I said, "Well." Let's get with the program. <laughs> I, looked, I was lying on that thing. I looked out the little window. Reader was out there praying for me. God healed me. We all have problems. And so just for a few moments tonight, to turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians. So if we're going to have these problems, let's, uh, let's not, waste, let's not waste, waste the problems. Let's learn the value of the problems. There's value in problems. I like, I, I tell the young people, and here's why, here's why these young people were chosen to be on this group, because they add value to the college by the way they sing, by the way they live, by, by t- talking to young people all over this auditorium tonight about West Coast Baptist College. They're adding value, and God will lead us to young people who will come to the college, and that adds value to the college because some young people who come to the college will be called to preach or young ladies called to the mission field, and these couples find each other. And they get married. Uh, the, the, here's Emily right here, and she met a, one of our graduates. She plays the piano for one of our little branch churches, and, and she met Thomas, and they're going to get married in December. What did I say, Thomas? I met Stephen. His name is Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 don't laugh at me. The Bible says comfort the feeble-minded. Don't laugh at me like that. <laughs> Hurts my feelings. All right, with, with that, look at, look at 1 Thessalonians 3. All right, so we're talking about problems. What are we talking about? What? What are we talking about? Okay, okay, so we all got them, right? We're all in the same boat, okay? All right, let's look at this. Wherefore, this is Paul talking. Paul had some problems. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear... We thought it good to be left at Athens alone and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass. And you know, for this cause... When I could no longer forbear, said I could hardly take it anymore, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, your love, and that ye have good remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Uh, I think you've been looking forward to this. We have. We have. Uh, I've been wanting to see this. Pastor's been wanting to show it off. The, 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 the next verse, verse, verse 7. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in our affliction and distress by your faith. This has encouraged me tonight. By faith, you built this building. By faith, you're going to move forward. Amen. By faith, you have to faith it. Amen. And we have problems. So what are we going to do in the midst of these problems? We're going to have to faith it. Let's continue. Verse 8, very important verse. For now we live. If we stand fast in the Lord, for what thanks can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. That's a good verse. And toward all men, even the guys that are jumping around going nuts on TV. We're commanded to love them and to pray for them. Because they need the Lord. And I've had to come to grips with that because I get ticked. I'd like to have a new TV too. (laughs) I'd like one of them free ones too, man, you know. Give me one in Molotov, whatever they are. <laughs> and toward men, as, as we do uh, uh, toward you, to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. And let's take 10 seconds and let that, sin- let that sink. Let it sink. Let it sink in. Got it? I read that today. I had let it sink in. And, and just a, and about... 
in about three minutes to three, but about less than five minutes, Pastor's going to come up here and he's going to have us pray. And we need to pray with joy. We need to pray with an expectant attitude and because we're the church of the living God. Amen. And Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So this is the church of God. This, this church is not the pastor's, it's not mine. This is the church of the living God. That's what it is. So I put, I put a couple of thoughts in my Bible. If I'm going to understand the value of problems, and I've had a few. Number one, recently my problems have, have accelerated my spiritual growth. Recently, my problems, my attitude, my uh, aggravation, all those things have accelerated recently my spiritual growth, and I want to grow spiritually. I want to be better tomorrow than I was today. Uh, I'm just I'm sitting there by a reader just thinking, I mean, a few weeks, 50 years, 50 years, that's, that's a long time even to be alive, right. much less with her sticking by me with when I've, been, when I've done well and when I've stuck my foot in it, when I've, when I've been pl- applauded, when I've been booed. <laughs> she stuck right with me. And that's a blessing. And, and, I, and, I, and I thought about that, and it encouraged me in the Lord that I, I'm praying that God will give us health and strength. Uh, we, have, we have one son, Joey, that his problem was 13 years ago, we discovered that his beautiful newborn baby, Elena Grace, had microcephaly, severe microcephaly, and severe cerebral palsy. And they were on the mission field in El Salvador. And uh, we, would, we went down there four times, and I was determined, when, we turned, when I turned 70, we're going to go down there and help Joey. We're just going to do it, because I love the El Salvador. The, I love the El Salvador. I love Cajutepeque, Metapan, San Salvador. I, I love those people. And Joey had a wonderful church and a Christian school, but Elena couldn't get help. They had to come off the field. And it, it, it was, it's a problem. And now Joey has to care for her 24-7. He has to change her diaper. She's 13. She will never walk. That's a problem. And then talking to Todd recently, our other son, our older son, is 44 years old. Both of our boys were adopted at birth. And they're very close. And... Um, and we're very tight. Our family's tight. We love each other. We're, I think we understand that we're sinners saved by grace. Amen. We're going to make mistakes. And, and, and Rita and I determined when those boys were born, we're going to love you with, with no strings attached. No strings attached. And God's been good to us. And Todd pastors a little, a little church on the coast up in Santa Barbara. And um, he has panic attacks. But that's a problem. It affects his marriage. It affects the church. It's a problem. So what are we going to do? We're going to sit on our hands and just muddy grub and stick our thumb in our mouth and stuck our th- and suck our thumbs, or are we going to t- determine that problems can accelerate spiritual growth? Amen. It can. We can retreat, or we can stand up and say, "I'm going to take advantage of this time. I'm going to read my Bible more. I'm going to pray more." I'm going to do some things. I'm going to mature. I'm going to grow up more and be stronger. I'm going to endure more. I want God to give me a, a heart for people. Number two, problems are not accidents. They are appointments. The problem in your life is not an accident. It's an appointment. Uh, when, when someone says, I have cancer, I get it. I get it. When somebody says, I'm going through chemo, I get it. I get it. When a young person comes to my office and says, my, my mother just died, I get it. Or my, my parents are getting a divorce, I get it. I get it. Uh, or or all, these, all these problems that through these 74 years that have, that have come up here, it's, it's, it's not an accident. I'm a minister. I'm a preacher. I have been a pastor. And, and God has brought all these things into my life from all different kind of angles for this very moment. For this moment. And so I, I, can, I, can, I can shake my finger at God and get mad, and, and I, I hate the name it and claim it gospel. I hate that. Go tell the Apostle Paul, get the daylights beat out of him. Go tell John the Baptist who got beheaded for what he, he believed in. 
go tell Joel, go tell Joel to go wash his fancy hair. <laughs> Take off his skinny blue jeans and, and be a man. Say, that, that's, that's not very nice. I know it. <laughs> I know it. But, I, but, I, but I'm tired of somebody trying to feed me something that's so unrealistic. It's just unrealistic to, to buy into that and, and, and then to say, well, it didn't happen to me, so God doesn't care. I, no, 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 God does care. God, God, God wants to sometimes stretch us. Amen. And he'll stretch you. And I, I've learned something. It hurts to stretch <laughs> with your back thing. Man, I mean, and, but, but, but there's benefit to that. There's benefit to being stretched by God because you're stronger after you're stretched. Problems can accelerate spiritual growth, and problems are not accidents. They are appointments, and then problems will draw us closer to God.